Welcome to the Untrapped Podcast, where we're motivated and inspired about success, small business, and personal development. And now, Keith Kalfas. Welcome to the Untrapped Podcast. This is Keith Kalfas. I'm here with Cornell from Mac Landscaping and Lawn Care. We are at the Entrepreneur Academy. The event's happening right now, and I really wanted to step out because he, he's here, bro. Cornell is here. <laughs> And I said, dude, we got to do a podcast. So we're in the hallway in Novi, Michigan. It's a beautiful here. What's up, man? What's going on with you, man? Nice weather out here. It's, been, it's the first time in the last three years it's been, like, warm outside. Last year it was cold and windy. The year before that it was snowing. So this year has been dope. Yes. It's a very, very nice out. We've had some beautiful Michigan weather. It'll be freezing in the morning and then by, like, 1 p.m., I had to change. Like, I go from wearing a jacket and pants and all that. Now I'm in shorts. Yeah, and we're at the time of the year where I've switched. I always wear the um, compression pants or shorts and compression shirt under my clothes that I wear. And we're at the time of the year where you switch from the regular stuff to the warm stuff. And so it's like 30 degrees in the morning, but just like you said, I got the the whole warm get up on the fleece lined pants, and then it gets to noon and it's eighty degrees, and I'm like, damn, I shouldn't have done this today. Precisely. So, uh, what's up, Blake from B and B is walking past right now, waving. So, man, tell us a little bit about your story and the come up, uh, where you came from, and. Give a quick snapshot first of your business and what you do in your business and who you serve. So mm-hmm. for those of you that might not know you, and then talk about your story. Yeah, well, I personally like the lawn maintenance side. So I do lawn maintenance and, you know, shrub trimming, leaf cleanup, fall cleanup, and mulch installs. That's basically the services that I I enjoy offering at my company, Mac Landscaping and Lawn Care. And then in the winter, we do some snow plowing for some small businesses, uh, but I keep that light as well because I like to be as stress-free as I possibly can. So I don't want to overload myself and try and push it too much. Uh, not to say I want, I don't want to have a big business, but I want to have a good business and what's good for me. So I keep it small and I keep it enough so me and Captain Jack aren't super overwhelmed uh, as it pertains to business. But Where I came from, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Steelers fan. Uh, So if you like football, go Steelers. I don't care. They're the best team to me. Uh, But from Pittsburgh, uh, learned lawn care, I guess, from my grandmother whenever I was a kid. But we were just cutting grass and trimming shrubs for my grandma. Like, we weren't getting paid, and we weren't learning um, the business that it could even be a business. It was just a chore, right? But I was working two full-time jobs in 2016, and I came across one of your videos, and you were giving out prices for landscaping. So I had now just purchased my my first home, which is the home that I have now. And uh, one day I was walking around the house, and there was a weed in one of the flower beds. So I seen it, and I just looked up. I remember my grandmother being like, you missed a spot from the window in her upstairs bathroom when we were cutting grass. And I would be like, who cares, you know? But then as I'm walking around my house, I see this weed in the flower bed. And I'm like, if I don't pick that, who's going to pick it? And it felt like my grandmother was looking down from heaven. And she was like, pick that. You know what I mean? You have to pick that. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I did. And then I just looked up and I had an appreciation for like, having pride in my property, right? I was also, like I said, with the go, to go backwards a little bit, I was working the two full-time jobs and I would get off on Saturday morning around 7 a.m., get home like 7.30, 8 o'clock. There'd be some lawn care guys lighting up, uh, lighting up lawnmowers. And I'd be pissed, like, get a real job. Why are you out here grown men cutting grass? It's a kid's job type thing. That's how I felt. Uh, I was a naive person then, right? I didn't know what I didn't know. So um, I was really in the lifting weights and things, and I would listen to motivational speakers rather than music because motivation 
motivational speakers like Les Brown, Eric Thomas, mm. um, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, these type of people speak to the inner calling that I felt like I already had. So I'm listening to them. And then at my second full-time job, I'm, I'm sitting there one day, and this is how I got into the business. You, one of your videos popped up. You were giving out the prices uh, for the, the thing, three-minute video. And when I seen that, it was like I went back into the past to when my grandmother was teaching me. It was like, and then to the spot where I pulled the weed out and having pride in my own property. And then to those guys who were out there cutting grass and it was like this this thing was talking to me that I didn't know was talking to me but this this wave was happening and I, and I didn't understand it and then your video I just popped up as I'm listening to these motivational speakers your video popped up and it's like hey how to start a landscaping company well, employee trap whatever you gave out the prices and all of that stuff happened it like clicked at the same time and I said oh I can create a business, a grass cutting business. My grandmother taught me how to cut grass. This guy's talking about how to price it. And mm. the kicker was I was working my second full-time job making $13 an hour. And I was gonna make $126 or something after taxes were taken out for that 16 hour shift. And your video said, you're gonna make $245 in 45 minutes and you weren't gonna be there. And I was just like, oh my God, like I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna start this grass cutting business. So <laughs> I went home, talked to my wife, um, and you know, had a rough day at that second job one day. And I just had that Dave Ramsey moment moment where I was like, you know, I've had it, I gotta do something. I sold my car, I had a Nissan Maxima, I sold that. After we decided we were going to do it, I sold it two days after we was just like, all right. My wife was like, go ahead, man, do it. Like, if you can do it, go ahead and do it. Mm. I sold my car and got into the business and then long-winded story, but that's how I got into it. Wow. How long ago was that? That was 2016. 2016. Wow. And you said $13 an hour. That made me think about... I got hired in at one of the biggest landscaping companies in Michigan as a foreman pulling around, you know, $150,000 worth of equipment with running a three man crew. And um, the pay for all that responsibility was $13 an hour. And I lived check to check, bro. And I was so bored that I started making YouTube videos at work. And then I kept making videos and then like you saw the videos. And so that leads me to my next question. Your YouTube channel is getting a lot of traction now and you're coming to events and people know who you are and you have your own podcast. Can you talk about how all that started? Well, in 2021, I had been watching YouTube videos before there were podcasters or anything like that. And it was the early people who were in it, like Blake, who was like, 17 or something at the time and i'm like what this 17 year old kid in missouri is killing it he's he's, he's about to buy a house and stuff like i it's like we'll watch blake yeah. grow up and then there was sean and tq and then there were was you and then brian came on the scene um and i started to to just watch all of your videos and so in 2021 after hearing about it was called GIE back then, but after hearing about GIE, first person I heard talk about it was Blake Albertson. It was like, all right, um, go to go to GIE. So in 2021, I, I wanted to come and say thank you to the people who created the content, who inspired me to even get into this business, which was like you, Sean CQ, the people that I mentioned. I had a list of 10 people and I got down here and I met all 10 of you. The second year I went down, people like knew who I was. Well, the first year someone knew, like seven people knew who I was because I was on Brian's podcast. So they had heard me talk on Fullerton Unfiltered and I had a caricature logo on my hoodie. And I go down and like, like a, I'll never forget, seven people was like, hey, Mac. And I had like 200 followers on Instagram and no YouTube channel. So why someone would know who I was was super like mind blowing to me, right? And that happened my first year going. 
I'm just going to meet you guys. And so 2022 happened. I had a little meetup and 25 people came and you were one of them. You and Blake both came. And then I, you know, more people was like, hey, I, I heard you on, because I had been on other people's podcasts now. I've been on the Green Industry podcast. I've been on uh, Jeremiah Jennings. Podcast. Like I had been on podcasts, but I still didn't really have YouTube or anything like that going. And just people just was like, I like your story. I heard you on such and such as podcast. I, I, you know, you inspired me or whatever. And then I would have conversations just with people at my job the jobs that I had prior to, and then people would be like, yo, you would be, you would be good on TV or whatever, whatever. And I eventually was just like, well, if people keep telling me this, maybe I'll just give it a shot. And so I just decided to pick the camera up and start doing YouTube videos. And to my surprise, people actually enjoy this stuff. So um, just, and then getting into the podcast, then my man Cedric, who wanted to meet me because he heard me on someone's podcast. Uh, he hit me up one day and he was like, hey, I'm about to go live on Instagram. And uh, I was like, I didn't even know what that was. I was like, okay. He was like, I'll invite you. And I said, cool. So I sat on my back patio and I got an invite from him and then we go live. And so we're watching, it's just him and I talking. I can't even remember what we were talking about. But I started on one of my tirades like I'm doing right now. <laughs> and he uh what one person watched it and i was like blown away that one person wanted to hear us I, I, it was like like i felt like wow i can't what one person it was like that is, people think that you got to be huge or something like one person was such a uh uh like a motivating thing and they were commenting like yo mac man that was a good point or something like that and i was like wow like we can have an impact through doing this and so we just kept doing it live after live after live. And I think we're like two years into it now. And mm -hmm. so it kind of started on accident uh, with the podcasting and everything. But once I got into doing YouTube, I was just like, it's just a natural progression. And then you see all you guys are doing it, multiple, multiple different things. So I wanted to see what that was about because we can only work for so long, you know, but uh, God willing, I'll always have a voice and be able to talk and our words carry big weight, you know what I mean? And so I feel like that can live on longer than any grass that I could cut or shrubs that I trim or whatever. So that's kind of how that happened. Mm. One thing I'm picking up on is this ability that you have, and I'm curious of whether or not it's natural or you had to develop the, the skill of uh, you're not afraid to go up and talk to people and introduce yourself and let them know uh, what you're genuinely what you're about. And so you have very quickly, um, you're, you're in the industry and you just like, everybody knows who you are now, like at these events and you stand with the presence, but it's because you make yourself known. Now, if I were to tell somebody, do you start your business, you come to the Equip Expo, come to Brian's event, go to go to local meetups and dive into the community, start following all these people on YouTube and you can grow your business quickly and learn a lot and then come to this event and even make friends and find accountability partners and stuff. But um, how are you uh, able to get right to the people you need to get to uh, or and have the conversations that will advance and get you to the next level where someone else might be? like more timid or afraid to, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, I come from a sports background and I'm not to say I was an NBA player, or NFL player, or anything like that. But in my local area, I was in one of the elite basketball players. So, um, and I mean that super humbly. Like I'm, I'm not trying to say I was a, anything crazy. Uh, but in the leagues I played in, I was one of the top players all the time and I had a confidence I think with that because in those situations it's a lot like what we do here is we get into uh we're in a league right and people have their teams and then those teams have star players but it's a big community and it's like the people always wanted to talk to the people who scored a lot of points or got a lot of rebounds or could dunk or whatever and I was always one of those people that was like a very good three point shooter or whatever. So you get into those conversations and now we're talking about 
in that in this case basketball well i, I can talk about basketball because i know it and i love it this is the same thing what we do in the green industry it's like i love the green industry now the same way i used to love basketball and so i have an excitement to talk about these type of things and i have an excitement to talk about other people who were excited to talk about these same things and i'm now 41 years old and i know that time is finite and we only have a limited experience on this earth and i don't want to live in regret because I wish that I had made it. And I think that if I had tried harder or had more knowledge or maybe YouTube and things were in a different time era for me, maybe I did have enough skill to make it to some uh, bigger level as a basketball player or as an athlete as a, as a whole. That didn't happen and I had a lot of regrets for that. So when we came to here and I was like, you know, it's not that I'm trying to compare myself to anybody else who's doing lawn care because I can only compare to my own self. No one else lives where I live. No one else is sleeping in the bed that I sleep in. So I'm not in competition with, with these people, but I enjoy being in the league with them. And mm. I'm not going to regret not taking the opportunity to talk to a Keith Kalfas if he's another dope player in the, in the league that I play in and I could learn something from him. Like, I'm not going to wait for that because we could be gone tomorrow or, you know, maybe something happens and I, and I don't get that opportunity again. What if we don't have live events anymore? And there was the opportunity that I had to change my life to get the information that I needed was there. And instead of saying, Hey, I'm Cornell Mack, I stood in the back and didn't do that. And then what? Like the blessing that you were supposed to have, you don't get to have. Well, I don't live in that world anymore. I, I kind of never have lived in that world, but now at the age I'm at, it's like, no, I'm gonna go make that connection. I'm gonna create that relationship with that person. And um, I think it is because like, I've always been kind of good at a sport and that meant we could talk about things. So I just don't care. I guess is the shortest way to put it. Mm. I, I don't care if someone doesn't like me, then that's okay. But we're going to have the opportunity to at least give them the shot. You know, that's fascinating. It's the opposite of, um, it's not arrogance or prideful or too proud to go up and talk to people. You see it as more humble because you see it as, Hey, this is an opportunity right now. I need to get up and go capitalize on that. So what makes you buy a ticket and drive across the country, even though you have a business to run, to come to live events and work on yourself and on your business and level up and all that? Like, What is the determining motivator, but how do you get the leverage on yourself to take all this action? And now you have a YouTube channel, you got a successful business, you have a happy family, you're successful, and you're taking more and more action. Every time I see you, you're like a sponge you're observing and you're just taking mental notes i can see it and it's inspiring because you you have this skill set that you keep the uh it's almost like you can see you can look at somebody or a converse something in a conversation i watch you do it and you could point out what's the important things and you know how to like like you have discernment it's a clarity it's like can you talk about that like the, the leverage you get on yourself to go and do it, and then the clarity to discern what's important versus not important. I think that that's just the ADHD thing. I only, it's a selfish sort of thing, I think, but I only care about the things that I believe matter. I have made you laugh a couple times because we got little inside jokes that I know that you'll, yeah, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, no, it's just that. I think that um, if, if I've, if I feel like it's not, this really doesn't matter, then I just, I kind of, my brain turns off and I start thinking of other things. And, you know, this is why I lose my train of thought so much is because it's like, if you're talking, if people are talking about something and I'm like, in my head, because I'm already having other conversations, the ADHD is bad in me, but in my head, I'm thinking, what in the hell is this person talking about? This don't but that's what I'm, I'm not actually feeling that, but that's, my brain just is like, all right, this doesn't matter. So we'll go somewhere else and, talk, <laughs> and, and I'll go somewhere else in my own thoughts while I'm looking at the person. 
until they say something that will can bring me back like, i've right. seen it it's almost like you know the little thing it's like uh when you when you when you find voltage electricity the little needle goes yep. ding, but as soon as you let off it just falls like off the start finder yeah <laughs> so you when this something is interesting to you you're you're bing you're all in and then if something is there's no like in between with you yeah. if you're not interested then it just like and it's bad <laughs> it, it, it's, that, <laughs> that's not necessarily a good thing though. i mean because I think then it's it, great it makes people feel like no you're really good at um, it makes people feel sometimes though i know this for a fact that it makes people feel like what they're saying to me doesn't matter and that's not the case i guess it court sort of kind of is but it's it's not actually how I feel, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. So like if you're saying something and it's it don't really matter, I'll space out sort of until <laughs> <laughs> till you bring the magnet back together, you know what I mean? You start talking about some bull stuff, it's like <laughs> you turn the magnet the opposite way and it just can't I, I can't listen to it. You know, we gotta be talking about something where we're both getting value from it, but then it can sometimes be selfish because it's like if I'm not receiving the value, I'm out of here. Well, you know what? For some feedback and to everybody listening, and I appreciate all of you, my friends that have that quality. Hey, my friend, it's Keith. If you want to level up your landscaping business, I'd like to invite you to join me live on my two-day Level Up Landscaping Business Workshop this November 20th and 21st. It's totally free. Open up your browser and type in keithkelfus.com slash level up to register now. We're going to learn three very critical things that help me turn my average ticket job from $350 to $1,650. I'll see you there. keithkelfus.com slash level up. Nah, I won't say his name. <laughs> nah, I'm going to say his name. Uh, Cause I I don't care. I have this friend who's hyper successful, a real estate multimillionaire, and he's one of my best friends. But bro, when you're talking to him, you better make sure you're bringing so much value, concisely compact, with each word that you say. Because as soon as you start babbling on about something or going off a different direction, or is it ADD or like he's instantly yeah 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 he just instantly tunes out and doesn't want to talk to you. And because he's got so much important stuff to do, he's got any he, and he's so successful. It's just like when you are around people that have that type of uh, expectation in their energy that you better bring value. Some people don't pick up on it and they just keep talking, but other people are, can feel it. And then like, whoa, when I'm around this person, I better I should respect their time and only talk about valuable things. So they come to you with value. Now, there's a place in time for that, like, you know. I don't know. I just like that quality about you. <laughs> well, not everyone does. And I, I mean, like I said, there's a, it can, it can be good, but it also can be bad. So I, I'm trying to learn how to be better with it. Like, so that I can actually listen to understand and not just listen to respond. Cause mm. I'm, I've been guilty of that. And I'm still very guilty of that a lot where it's like, I, kind of know what I think you're going to say already. And so now I'm just waiting so that I can respond rather than hearing. Like, that's one of the things I admire about you is I watch you and you like sit back and actually try and listen to hear what someone is saying so you can understand them. And I'm trying to get better with that. You know, we're all getting older, bro. And so I'm trying to become a better person, but I think that's one of those things where there's a fine line. That you that feel like sense. I listen when you talk? Yeah. Well, at least to me anyway. Wow. I've heard that a lot lately, and I that's so strange. Maybe if I do have that quality, I felt very ignored as a kid, and I felt very – I grew up feeling very broken and unworthy because no one listened to me, and I had so much valuable stuff to say even as a kid. I was so introspective. Like, I, I was – I always had so many questions and so much. And and so I grew up very upset and pissed off. And all I had was motivational books and CDs and stuff. So my friends became Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Wayne, Di Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle. I was listening to motivational speakers and stuff like that. And I felt isolated. So to get around people that are actually intelligent, that have 
freaking goals. Like, dude, there's so many smart people in this world. And it's a humbling when, when you think you know it all, bro. There's people that will wipe the floor with you with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I swear. And so I, I like to listen, listen to seek to understand read the book, uh, Dale Carnegie's how to win friends and influence people. And, um, Anyways, um, I want to switch gears real quick. Can you give us some hyper quick things to make more money in your lawn and landscape business that comes to the top of my mind? Like, do this, do this, don't do that. Do this, do this, don't th- Like, boom, 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 boom. Get on Google immediately. Uh, the, the amount of people that I talk to that are not on Google, I think it's, and I've, I don't use Facebook personally because I've gotten to a point where I'm, my customer base is where it's at and I only want the houses that are around those houses now because of I have a small business but the amount of people that are not on Google is mind blowing to me when it's free like Google can make you so much money just by being on there having uh, good ratings having pictures and uh, people who have left you positive reviews has that's been the number one I would say thing like 83 83% of all our new fresh leads come from Google is to be on there immediately. And people think that maybe you don't want to be bombarded with phone calls, but I mean, if the phone ain't ringing and you're not working, then you're not making money. So I would say the, the best thing to do is to get on Google and then to be super organized, which is something I'm still working on. And it's a, it's an ongoing process, but to be organized, like having a good CRM, we both use jobber. Uh, you could use whatever you want, but having a good CRM and, uh, and actually using it, you know, like, because, like routing yourself. And so you're not wasting your time driving all over the place. Mm. I'd say getting into YouTube university and going through and listening to everyone and then making decisions that work better for what you do, because what works for Keith in Michigan might not work for me in Pennsylvania, might not, it, it, but it might work for Blake in Missouri, but it might not work for Ricky's Pro Lawn Service down in Florida. But they might all have channels, and they're all saying stuff that's applicable for where they're at, but you need to be able to have discernment, like you just talked about, to use what is good for you and your search and your situation. So uh, I'd say those three things is to do a lot of research, make sure you have a good CRM and learn how to use it and be on Google. Uh, Those those things have been the best. And then uh, a little bonus would be be the person who is creating the network. Like you have to have a network. You got to have people who you can talk to that are thinking like you're thinking. Like, if you're a quarterback, you can't go and talk to the defensive lineman about what you're supposed to read when it comes to the defense because you're playing two different positions. They're not going to understand. So if you're a business owner and you can't go talk to people who aren't business owners about how to be better in your business because they're playing a different game than you're playing. So you got to have a network, and I would say to be a network creator. Like create a network. And then, you you know, Stanley Dirt Monkey said this at the LCR Summit, not to be a wheel and a spoke type person, but to be a top-down person. If you create the network, everybody else who's creating networks under you are all part of your network as well. So I, those would be the four things that I'd say have helped me the most when it comes to that generating more revenue thing. Mm, so he said, don't be a spoke in a wheel. Yeah. He says, because if you're the middle part and you're the spoke in the wheel, everything comes down to you. But if you have a network and you're at the top and then you, this person gets eight people below them and they get like almost like a pyramid, mm. not a scheme. It's like a network that funnels back to you. If that makes sense. I want an example of that because I, I do multi-level marketing and networking. I understand how org charts work and how I actually joined an MLM one time. Uh, I've been in a bunch of them and I signed up the right person who went and signed up. Dude, they signed up like, I think like 80 or 100 people. And then I signed up another person who went and signed up 
someone they start over over a thousand people joined and then i think over ten thousand people joined within two years people all over the world from ohio to australia to all over and i was getting checks in the mail because i literally qualified and signed up the right people mm -hmm. yeah i worked really hard for a long time to do it I still get a little bit of money today from it, and that was like ten years ago. <laughs> that's it was an MLM, but that's it's a very microscopic amount of money. It's nothing to be like, oh, I have all this free money. It was, right. but anyways, um, it's like probably twenty seven bucks a month or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's enough for a few Starbucks coffees. Yeah, <laughs> but um, um, anyways, okay. So what not to do? What not to do? Uh, don't be the person that stands in the back and doesn't ask questions. I'd say don't be a hater, be a congratulator. Uh, there's a lot of people who are go to the gas station and they see you, they don't even wave. They give you a smug look because they see you as competition. There is no competition out here. So don't see, that even if you see a person on the same street doing the same job as you, it's, you didn't lose anything by them doing a job. Like... Them doing a job means there's going to be more work in that neighborhood now. So hopefully they did a good job. So congratulate them, right? Don't be a hater. Uh, what not to do? Pay your taxes. Make sure that you pay your taxes. Don't not pay your taxes. Uh, there's a lot of things to not do. Don't don't uh, try to keep up with the Joneses. Just because you see uh, Brian's lawn maintenance with the 20-foot trailer and nice Ford does not mean you have to do that. When I first started my business, I was just like, man, if, if I could just have a riding lawnmower, if I just had a riding lawnmower, because I seen that people had riding, I didn't even know anything about them, right? And guess what else? Every yard that I had, I had, had steps that I had to carry a lawnmower up. I couldn't even use it. So if I go out, and I did go out, I spent $600 on a Husker Bona riding tractor, so that I never even got to use. But it was only because I seen other people who had big mowers and I thought that I should have it. And that I would just magically get the work for that piece of equipment. Like, mm. don't try and keep up with the Joneses. Buy for what you need is, is a big thing. And uh, to steal one of your phrases, try and figure out what your worth is early. Like, you're already super valuable. Like, so don't diminish yourself by thinking, I'm just a grass cutter because that's what I did when I first started out. I was, I would go to my wife's corporate dinners for her. She's like a, she works in the corporate world. And I go to these dinners and they'd be like, well, what do you do? Like, uh, I, I cut grass and I'll kind of feel like I diminished myself. But when I realized that like you do a little bit of math and like you got, 94 customers you got a minimum price of 63 dollars do the math you cut grass weekly like the people that i'm having a conversation with that are in that corporate world a lot of them ain't making what i make on a, mm. on a monthly basis so and this is not to diminish them but it's to uplift me or you the person listening like even if you have 10 yards next year you'll have 20 or 40 like and before you know it, you actually have a company, mm. you know? And so, like, don't diminish yourself. Don't think less of yourself. Know your worth and listen to the things that you hear, like, because it's not lies, you know? Like, mm. knowing, knowing that you're valuable to not just the industry, but to yourself, to the world, to your family, to God. Like, these things are things that you just need to know about yourself because then it'll raise how you feel about yourself, which then will allow you to, because you're listening to a podcast right now, so hopefully to better yourself, right? You're worth so much more than even what you think you're worth. So like, think about yourself as like the greatest thing ever. And then you say to yourself, I am worth, I'm the best person to cut this person's yard. Why? Because I came to LAL or I went to Equip Expo or I listened to the Untrapped podcast. This is the value that I'm giving to this customer. Last year when I came here, I had push mowers. This year I got a zero turn. Or last year when I came here, I didn't have a stand on aerator. Or I didn't even offer giving mulch. But you now increased and put those things into practice on your, on your business. Now, what's that worth? It's worth a lot, right? So don't diminish yourself. Like, you're going to be great. Like, you're going to be dope. And so 
the biggest thing is don't diminish yourself. Hmm, bro, you're speaking life. I, I can so. I can hear the guy right now listening to this podcast and it's inspiring him and you just painted the path for him and illuminated it, but he could see it within himself and he just made the decision right now. Yeah, it's dope. And there's so many examples. Like me personally, I remember when you were on the job sites with the with the cut off basketball type jersey on. Mm. Like, look, we carry buckets rather than you know, well barrels, and this is why. <laughs> oh, for rocks. Ahead. We're yeah, experimenting yeah. with that. It was right. faster in some situations. Mm -hmm. it, but I remember that. I remember you going around like, look, we're going to cut this Arborvitis and this Bradford Pear and this blah, 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 blah. And we're going to cut off these things and all of that. And then you graduated to from the pickup truck, the F-150, just like I got new leaf springs put in and all of this. Like, yeah. I, I remember all of that stuff. I remember when Brian just had the the utility trailer and he didn't have thunder yet. Like I remember all of that stuff and I got to grow vicariously through you. So there's so many wonderful examples of people's journey that can illuminate what is going to happen for you. I was seeing it. I was like, one day I'm going to have that stuff. And it wasn't to my surprise. I knew it was going to happen. Right. Mm. So you just got to know because it's going to happen. And, and the reason that's going to happen is because the person listening to this right now, you are believing in yourself just by listening to stuff like this. Right. Mm. It's going to happen for you. Wow. And so what about like maybe the guy who's listening says, I know all that is true and I believe you, but you're not dealing with the, and facing the things that I'm facing right now. Like, you don't know my, like, like some, for a guy who's really going through something tough, you know? Yeah, I'd say that, see, we think that we're special, right? I've recently, you know, started to get closer with God and everything. And one of the things that I realized about the Bible is like 2,000 years old, but it is a lot of stories that we're still seeing that are happening right now today. And so if history's just been repeating itself, over and over and over for the last however long humanity has been here, what makes you think that you're so special that your problems are worse than the next person's problems? How I grew up is how I grew up and how you grew up is how you grew up, but it's not about how you grew up, it's about where we're going. So the people that think that maybe you don't understand, I'd say, okay, well, you're telling yourself that because at some point Keith thought people didn't understand, but he changed right? Like we can change whatever we want. We are the master and the creator of our life. I say this to people all the time. You were created by the creator to be creative. Mm. If you're not going to be creative and find out, find creative ways to change your mind. Um, look, man, I'm going to just be real. If you don't, if you're not willing to do that, then that's on you. Like you can't use the excuses that we make up in our own heads for why we can't be successful when there's examples of other people who have had problems too. Our problems are, my problems are no bigger or smaller than the next person, but they're there nonetheless. There's people who get through them and there's people who don't. And the people who don't, um, for whatever reason, uh, feel bad for them, will pray for them, but you're not that person. That's how I think about that. So I, I don't compare what my go through is to what someone else's go through is because my, my problems might be minuscule as it compares to someone else's. And maybe I wouldn't understand, but there's people out here that have gotten through worse things than whatever I've went through and whatever the person who feels that way is going through and they got through it. So there's examples out there. Just go find them and change your own mind. If you change your mind, you change your world. <sighs> This is so good. I'm going to have this whole podcast transcribed by uh, Otter AI. Mm -hmm. I haven't broken down into show notes, and then I'm going to compress it and probably write a blog article about it. Nice. Dude, where are we going? 38 minutes. <sighs> <laughs> when, you, when you talk, um, you have a calmness and a certainty that it's... um reassuring and
and I kind of want you to like uh, circle back and talk a little bit more about how where does the certainty come from that part how have you tapped into your certainty about what you're doing the direction you're going you know because i only do what i know like i ain't trying to be more than what i am already i ain't it's like i only talk about the things that i know and that i experience and so i can be certain about it because i know it like if i don't know it then i can't talk about it with the Mm. And what about in the context to, hey, this other guy has built this multi-million dollar thing and he's he's like my age or, or that you're comparing yourself to the people or watching some of your friends become or people on YouTube. But they're so successful that it almost um, can put you in a state of envy, which is very unhealthy. Um, how uh, can you can you talk about navigating through that or not at all? Like, where's how do you follow your, your own unique thing and not be distracted by other people and their missions? Well, because I only, I have what I want to accomplish. It's not for someone else to. And the people that I see uh, that have those things and they could be the same age as me or even younger than me, I just feel like they're still human. And if they've, if they've done it, then I can do it. Like I just talked about, there's examples of people who have done things. And I feel like if they've done it, then I can do it as well. Mm. And the only difference is maybe they, they have some knowledge that I don't have yet. And that's why they were able to accomplish uh, that thing before I could. Or maybe that wasn't something that was a priority to me. I listened to Sam Gimbel when we were just having lunch. And to hear that brother talk about the different ways snow is done with brine and all, and he was talking to the boss people. I'm like, wow, like, whoa. I'm working with my soldier and everything, but I don't know, have half the knowledge of him. That's why I don't have, I couldn't have a $10 million business right now. And the only difference is Sam has more knowledge, but Sam is a human being the same way I am. Mm. He just learned something. You know, maybe he had a mentor or something. I don't know. It's not for me to know. But I, I don't play the compare game because it's like I could just see. Like he knows more about the snow game than right now than I know. And so there's no – how could I be envious or try to compete? I, there's no reason to do that. Instead, I'd rather ask a question. Like how can I learn what you've learned? You know, I'm willing to be humble. I don't know everything. And you know what? He would tell you he don't know everything either. And he's looking for more and more knowledge. That's why I was able to listen to the conversation. I got to see some of his knowledge and it was inspiring. But he was asking the boss guy. And the boss guy was giving him more information. And I was just like, wow. Like, you know, so it's that. I think that the, the difference is just information. And then that's out there for all of us to have, you know, but sometimes you have to have experience that goes with the information. And what if somebody says, yeah, but all this stuff costs money and I don't have enough money. I'm not making enough money. Money will solve the problems. I need more money. Where's the money going to come from to pay for all this type of stuff and all this, like you say, is knowledge and is the gap. But I think that. When it comes to the money stuff, there's a lot of stuff that's out there that's already free. So get as much free stuff as you can get. And if that don't get you where you need to go, then maybe pay a little bit and see where that goes. What I've uh, come to understand when it comes to paying for things like maybe a coach or a coaching car or whatever, is if you have the right questions, then when you... You have to have the right questions. If you don't have the right questions, then don't waste your money. But if you don't have the answers to the questions and this person can, and the only thing stopping you from getting that answer is a hundred bucks or 1200 bucks, I would say do it because the, the return on the investment is what you're looking at. Not this short term thing that's right in front of you, which is just this little paywall. But it's what do you get? So if you had to spend a thousand dollars to make a hundred thousand dollars, wouldn't that be worth it? That's how I look at it. I used to feel like this, and also, you're an entrepreneur, right? Like, entrepreneurship is about 
learning so that you can go out into the uncharted waters and be able to swim. And I would rather have the life vest of knowledge from people when I'm out there so I can build my boat and make sure that we float. Uh, and if it costs me a hundred bucks or 500 bucks to get that, then I believe that's going to change and save my life. So, hey, use all of the free things that you can. And if you can't get to where you want to, pay a little money and see how far that goes and look at what the return on your investment is after you spent that money. And then you get to decide for yourself, was it worth it or was it not? Don't just take my word for it, but I've paid for things and I've seen the return on investment, whether it be through learning how to be better on YouTube or podcasting or in my actual business. I've got to see followers grow and on the business side, revenue grow. And some of that has been knowledge I've learned for free. And then some of that has been knowledge I've paid for. So it's a combination of both. And, uh, but I can't tell people how to spend their money. You know, it's their money. Yo, there's three things we've identified that turn our average ticket landscaping job for real from 312 up to 1650 average ticket that's way more money way more profit those three things are one service area identify it and stick to it number two is your service suite what are your highest profit services do those over and over and over and over and over and number three is how we turn landscaping problems into profits with our property opportunity checklist we basically it's, it's upsells and add-ons identifying more stuff that needs to be done I'm going to stop right here and just invite you to my totally free two-day Level Up Landscaping Business Workshop, November 20th and 21st. Open up your browser and type in keithkelfus.com slash level up. Register now. It's totally free. I'll see you there. Let's go. Bro, you have simplified with your answers to my questions without going down weird, complex, emotional rabbit holes. You just like... You're calling it how you see it. It's like, oh, you ordered steak? Boom, there's steak. It was it was like uh, interesting because there are, I can relate to this when I was younger, you get caught in the swirl and in this mind loop thing of basically being a victim and not wanting to invest in yourself or being afraid to and having all the yeah buts and all the excuses. And so in my position with social media, I coach a lot of guys, I talk to a lot of people and like we have courses and I have coaching and stuff. and But some people, um, and I feel bad my heart goes out because sometimes they'll reach out on social media and it's almost like they want the right answers and they have their hand out, but it's not like they want me to do all the work to even just like give them the information and they don't even have their hand like out properly to receive it. It's almost like a, like they're, it's like they're crying out for help. And I totally get that. I know that feeling and I know it takes guts to reach out to somebody. It takes courage and tenacity and all these things. Cause, um, I reached out to Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher right on Instagram. I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, we're shooting shop tour series interviews. I know you're in Michigan. Even if it happens in a few years, let's do it. And then I like, I'm putting right on Brennan Bouchard's post. He's one of the biggest keynote speakers in the world. We're going to be on stage together soon. I'm just, now I'm, I'm, I'm done in my, with my own excuses. It's time to play a bigger game and to level up and start thinking bigger because the people that take little tiny, tiny steps and they don't, they're just tiptoeing scared. You're just going to get little teeny tiny results and you can actually take big leaps that aren't big risks. Right. All it takes is sometimes is asking, but I, sometimes guys are just terrified and trapped in their own mind. And I'm like, you know what? This guy doesn't have any mentorship. He doesn't have a community. He doesn't have brothers around him to encourage him. This guy's probably in a bad environment and I feel bad because the, the, the victim and complaining and whining and, powerlessness is completely consumed his life and he's met and built and has a purpose for so much more. And, and sometimes you like, you lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Like, bro, if you're sitting and scrolling on TikTok, watching stupid shit and social media, wasting an you know, hour a day, that's 365 hours in a year. Mm -hmm. That's many multiple work weeks. So, um, what are you doing with your time? So it's like, 
it's just time to draw the demarcation line and say this is where. Yeah, because I mean, people they reach out, and I mean, you got like sixty thousand people following you, and people are hit you up. How do you know if people are serious and you're not going to waste your time? Because I got time for people, man. Like, I got time to DM. I got time to have a phone call and all of that. But now what I've uh, come to learn is that sometimes people just want the feeling of talking. Like, they, but they're not going to do. They're just going to talk and they're not going to do. And that frustrates me because I just want to see people win. And I don't know a lot, but what I do know, I'm not really selling it right now, you know, but I am getting to the, to a point where it's like, man, we just sat here and talked for 35 minutes, you know what I mean? To just some person on the phone, they, they people calling me on Instagram and things like that. And I was like <laughs> accepting them because I want to talk to people, but then we've talked and nothing, like mm -hmm. did nothing. They want to add, hey, man, I love your YouTube channel. You've done so well. Hey, man, well, yeah, what's your YouTube channel so I can follow it? Well, I've been thinking about making videos, but, you know. And then I see them at Equip Expo. Hey, have you made that video? No, nope, they haven't made the video yet. It's like, well, I remember I, like, talked to you for an hour and a half, and you talked telling me about all these things you were going to buy and everything, but you still have, well, I don't have time. All right. Well, should I have made someone pay for for that time, oh. since I had to waste two hours of my life, right? And it's like, yeah, I mean, so sometimes you got to put a a paywall to protect yourself. And it's, you know, mm. I, I'll give you a refund, buddy, if this you don't is, waste my time. I have a friend who has multiple businesses. He's a high-level coach. He's highly successful, very conscious. And I he we're real friends and he sits on the phone and drops golden nuggets, bro. We'll sit on the phone one, two, three hours. Sometimes I'm like, dude, I almost feel like, dude, how's this guy have this time to pour into me like this has changed my life. And there's other times he's actually stopped and put me in check. And he said, Keith, I don't mean to sound like, um, I don't know what the word is braggadocious or arrogant saying this, but you, because we're friends, I don't want you to take for granted what I'm telling you right now, people pay me $50,000 to tell them what I'm telling you right now. People pay me um, lots of lots of money and I coach people and they get real results. The things I'm telling you is like devised from thousands and thousands of hours of different business owners who've been through hell and pain and heartache and struggle and suffering and I'm giving you the keys right now and I want you to take it very seriously. Like don't take it for granted. Mm. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> It's like, so at all different levels, you know, that like you have value. So you have to guard that value. And it's, it's so, so, so powerful, dude. I'm so excited about where we're at with this community and how, mm -hmm. how you can get access to information. I agree. And the people, it's like the, there's no substitute for like getting to beat someone and the real person to person. Like we're in the same room together. Uh, I think that that alone is worth paying for. Like, what about the guy who has like maybe a family or his wife is like, you're going to leave your family and go across the country, this thing. Well, I can feel guys listening for? right now. Like, like yeah. what are you doing this for? I do this for my family. I, I, coming to these events is going to Equip Expo in 2021. And I brought my wife with me. Um, and that was the first time she got to see, just like I got to see how big the industry really was. It, you might just be cutting grass and maybe you just started out and you only got nine yards right now to your wife or your significant other. It may seem like you're wasting your time, but you're not because when I got to equip expo in 2021 and I seen all of the people, all the equipment, how big the booths are, like the whole atmosphere of that, I, I was blown away and it made me, for the first time since I had started my business, it made me feel like I'm not a grass cutter. This is a, I have a company, you know? It changed how I felt when I when I seen all of that stuff. So um, what I will say is your family ain't always gonna understand why you're doing what you're doing, but that's a sacrifice that we have to make because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And people don't believe until they actually see. 
I've had so many conversations with people when I first started this thing. I was like, hey, man, I started this grass cutting business. You could do it too, because I'm not special. This is what I'm doing, boom, boom, boom. They laugh, right? But now we're cutting 93 yards. They didn't see me get six different trucks, uh, upgrading my trucks over the year, mowers and equipment and trailers and all of that. And now the same people that didn't believe or didn't understand and didn't want to know, now they're asking questions or they want a job, right? Hmm. So maybe your family or people that you know, they don't understand yet, um, make them understand. Just make them understand. Yes. Man, when I finally figured out how to start making multiple streams of income or even with landscaping, I was running around telling like, I found it, I found it, I found the way. Like, come on, let's go, I found it. Like, I broke through, mm. and nobody cared. I'm like, I, I was so isolated. Like, I was like, what the heck's going on? So anyways, I got two more quick questions for you. The first one is, when is a time you really messed up? It could be in your business or personal, whatever, but, and how did you handle it? So you need to have commercial auto insurance. If you start a business and you are pull, if you're using it for to cut grass with or to pull a trailer or anything, you need to have commercial auto insurance. And um, I found out the hard way, uh, but I have a great insurance agent I'm with a great company. And so it didn't hurt me. But when I bought my dump truck, I didn't know that it needed to. First of all. I didn't know that I had to call my insurance people on my own. I thought when you drive off, they every other experience I had ever had, the car dealership contacted my insurance and all of that. But it wasn't like that for this commercial thing. So I was driving my dump truck for, I don't know, like six weeks, four or six weeks or something under uninsured. I didn't even know it. I, it's because I, I didn't call my insurance agent. And how I found out was I was leaving after a flag football game. I had to take my dump truck, and I was in a parking lot, and I was backing out, and I backed into a Malibu from some people from Wisconsin. They were only in Pittsburgh to come watch Wisconsin play Pitt in football. <laughs> and they was at this, this uh, we were at a bar. We, they, we were at this bar just eating. And when I left, I backed out and I back. I couldn't even feel it because I had a big dump truck. I backed out. I just tapped their bumper, but it bent their bumper in. And then I left because I didn't know that I hit the car. And I'm coming down, right back down the street where the bar is at. And all these people run out into the, they're like, you're trying to hit and run or whatever. So I pulled back in, the police came and everything. And that's how I found out that my truck wasn't insured. And then I had to go through this whole process uh, to prove to my insurance company that I wasn't trying to pull a fast one and have a lower insurance rate or something like that. So um, make sure that you have commercial auto insurance for sure when you start a business and you're going to be using your truck for commerce. Uh, that would be That's the biggest thing that happened to me. And how I fixed it was getting a commercial auto policy and so you didn't get like huge tickets or fees or fines and no and everything was it was just about the coverage for their car because there was nothing wrong with my dump truck at all literally the corner but if it was uninsured how did they get paid for it was insured they just had to do some stuff on the paperwork because whenever i transferred from one truck to the other they didn't cancel the other truck's policy so they just I guess retrofitted it so that the date of my insurance was at the date of the purchase of the truck. Oh, because so, insurance follows the driver. Yeah, right. So my, I was insured. I, it just wasn't in the paperwork the right way. So they just corrected all of that. But, so, but in a commercial policy ins insurance, you can have multiple drivers. I'm obsessed mm -hmm. uh, in your vehicle. I'm obsessed with this topic because I won't even get into it right now, but I, just make sure everybody listening, I don't care if you're like, whoa, that's expensive. You better have insurance on everything and you better pay for it every month on time. Yeah. And I used to say there's three things because it's usually two, taxes and death. No, there's taxes, insurance, 
and death mm-hmm. as three things you can count on. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. So my final question, because we're coming up on one hour, is where can everybody find you? Oh, well, on uh, I do a live show on Instagram every Monday night called On the Attack with Mac. I have a podcast, On the Attack with Mac podcast. But we record every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on Instagram and YouTube. Um, I do another live show called Long Care Power Moves every Wednesday night on Instagram. I got a YouTube channel, Mac Landscaping and Lawn Care. But if you want to talk to me directly, the best way to do that is on Instagram at Mac underscore Landscaping 412. That's it. Perfect. Thank you so much for being on the Untrapped Podcast. Bro, love it. All right. All right. Peace. Well, I hope you liked the show. And if you like the Untrapped podcast and you get value from it, can you please take a minute and go over to Spotify and leave it a well-worded positive five-star review? It helps boost the rankings on Spotify so the show can get to more people. Therefore, this these messages can get out to more people and inspire more people so then they can go out and start their small businesses and crush it and get to the next level. It's a huge deal. All right, I'll see you in the next show.